today that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. You doing all right? You doing all right? All right, good. God bless you. I, I want to pick up where we left off last week and, and go some scriptures I'm not sure I covered uh, last week. Uh, and that is the fact is that how when you ask them who people say they are, we, we cover that. Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, hallelujah. We, we covered last week, we talked about, uh, like I said, the topic of the topic of what does God say that you are, right? And we talked about the fact that Jesus asked that question uh, to his disciples, of whom the people say that I am. And, and then and then they sit there and said that some of you, some will call you uh, one of the prophets, Jeremiah, Elijah, or one of those people, or John the Baptist, and, 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 and then Jesus asked the question in 15, said to him, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to them, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not received, revealed this unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. And then we, we talked about the fact is that uh, man, even if you do good things, will sit there and, and, and accuse you of being a devil, right? I think here it says in Luke 11, 14, and he was casting out the devil and was dumb, and it came to pass when the devil was going out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, he cast out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others tempted him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. But if by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do you do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man arm keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. When a strong man that shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor where he trusted and divided his poor. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scatters. So the fact is that you know how people sit there and want to sit there and call Jesus uh, even a devil uh, is is a trip in itself, and and we got to watch out. Said, who does God? Who do people say that you are? Right? I think that's a good question. If if if, if they challenge Jesus, they'll challenge you, and they use the whole tricks of the Bible to do that. And last week we talked about it, but I wanted to go over these scriptures, showing the reference of how. People will use, re-identify you or me or, or, or Jesus. Because, you know, Jesus said that we fellowship with the suffering. Well, sometimes as we walk the walk or seek to walk the walk, there's so many people that are going to sit there and challenge who you are as a believer. And 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 I, I just wanted to bring that out because I think a lot of people, when they come into the gospel, don't recognize how much the child. I never even recognize as much as I see more and more these days of how much people try to do character assassinations. Uh, how people try to frame, and I think we talked about it last week about the narrative of, uh, about Christ, about God, about uh, uh, this country. And about you as individual, that if you don't go my way, then I got to change the narrative that I have about you in order to bring you down. 
uh, and, and to put you out because you're not going my way. So this is a good example of, of how people use the tools of the enemy. And I, and I want to bring this up again. The tools of the enemy is to make you doubt who you are in God, in Christ Jesus. That, that's the tool that the enemy does. You know what I mean? Question what God says. Amen? Yeah. So mm -hmm. let, let's check this out. And there's a good example at, at, uh, of uh, the man born blind. Right? I wanted to bring that out because I wanted to show you that, that, that this is this, this pattern exists today that we that, that the enemy uses. It says, uh, it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. That's a great thing, right? I think that's a blessing uh, of opening the eyes of a man that was born blind. Verse 15. And then the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes, and I wash, and I do see. Therefore, says some of the Pharisees, this man, look at that. Look, let me tell me this man. This verse 16. This man is not of God. <laughs> How many people you think we do today saying who's not of God? <laughs> yeah, I think it happens even unconsciously. <laughs> you said you said unconsciously? Unconsciously, I think sometimes we we put people in that category. Yeah. We we'll, we'll see them do do something or even say something and automatically assume, you know. There's no way they're Christian. <laughs> or that, they're not a Christian. And, and sometimes um, consciously we, we we challenge I think we challenge ourselves too on it, don't we? Yeah. You know, uh, I'm not a man of God <laughs> because the 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 whole tent. You know, the thing about it is that before you came in, I was talking about the fact that the heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. Right? The whole you you understand the whole heaven repented when one sinner sinner repents, changes his heart, changes his mind. And yet, on this world, being mindful of the things of man, we're quick to. We're quick to go and be something else. We're quick to, 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 to say, this ain't a man of God. This ain't a woman of God. Uh, because they slip. They don't meet all the, the standards. Even when we do good. Especially when you talk about uh, jealousy and all those other things, right? So, yeah. Uh, it's interesting in 16. Therefore, some say of the Pharisee, this man is not of God. Because he what? He does not keep the Sabbath day. Others ask the question, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a vision among them. I think that's a I think that's what Christ even said. If you don't believe me for my words, believe me for my works. Right? And I think that's <laughs> And that, that's something that even that for us. Called him sinner to me. Huh? It, you know, says a lot about how folks uh, make acquisitions based on the law when they don't fully understand it. And, uh, you know, that they call the Son of God a sinner. Yeah. You know, that's deep. Well, you know, I think it's even deeper when they say crucify him, right? Crucify yes. him. I, I mean, I you know, they had that. The, 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 uh, he came into the city, said, and they were saying, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna. But then, time it came to the uh, uh, persuading the whole crowd. And I don't know, obviously going to be something in the crowd that didn't say crucify. You know, I don't think Mary said it. I don't think Peter and them said it. But the majority of the people changed from Hosanna to crucify. And and that's how, it's, to me, it's like that's how quick 
Well, that's not the quick things, sure. How you know how people can just put you in another box because you don't line up the way of man, you know? Uh, that I think that's that's the key critical piece out of there. You know, verse 17, it said, and, but I like this though. This is called keeping your testimony in spite of. <laughs> he said, 17, and they said to the blind man again, what says thou him? Then he opened thy eyes. Look what the brother said. He's a prophet. I, you know, I just want to put that in for people thinking is that hold on to your confession. You know what I mean? Hold on to what, what you know, despite what people don't agree with you on. Despite what people may say about you, what they say about Jesus. Despite anything, hold on to your confession. You know, whole boy ain't changed. The whole boy's like, he, he's a prophet. You know, yeah, one person said he's a sinner. You have some that say, I don't know how this sinner can do these things. But whole boy, I told the man who was born blind, what he said, he's a prophet. I, 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 I don't know what else you want me to say, but I'm going to just tell you that I'm going to line up with what God says a person is supposed to be. And the same thing about even what God says about who we are. God says, I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God. I, I, and I want to I want to put that emphasis in people is don't lose your confession. Don't, don't, don't go outside of what God says you are. Don't let people make you something other than what he wants you to conform to be. You know? So I, I, I like the fact this is 17 is saying that, and let's see what 18 says. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, like which up. is what people say and do about ourselves, right? Your own conviction in life. There's going to be people that don't believe what you say. But you know, that's still okay. He said, uh, believe concerning that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, and they asked them again, saying, is this your son? Who you said was born blind? How then does he now see? Now, you know, the boy just told him how he saw, right? So I guess they expected that, that, that somebody else was going to say something different. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but by what means he now sees we know not or how or who has opened his eyes we know not he is of age ask him he shall speak for himself now I want to you know what the next verse says these words spake his parents. Why? Because of fear of the Jews. How often? Anybody that's listening to this, how often have we changed our confession, changed our position because of fear of people? How often does that happen? I think I will submit to you that happens many times because the same type of peer pressure that was back in us, some of us in high school or, or in, in, in junior high school or elementary school, that same peer pressure happens even now in this day and time. If you don't line up what I say, then I'm going to use peer pressure to, to, you know, to get you to change your position. Or I'm going to punish you because you don't line up the way I want you to line up. You know, we we, we got that going on even in, in politics today, don't we? We, we got people to sit there and say, if you don't agree, that what it was stolen. I, I'm just throwing in there. It was stolen. Oh, you don't agree with that. Oh, you got to go. Did you vote for the Biden bill? Did you vote to, to give him a win? Oh, you got to go. 
Because see, we didn't want a win. What we wanted, we wanted a failure. Because see, that's the resume that we want to use against somebody. See how you see? What I'm saying even in this world that that's how things line up. You know, if people don't want you to agree with them, that they will use uh, intimidation, ostracizing, and anything else just to keep you off track. And I think it's more important for me to say to the people today is make sure that when it comes to the choice between God's will and man's will, do God's will. Is that acceptable, brother? And you know what? It is acceptable because that, that's what he says. Thy will be done. But they, verse back 22 again, because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed. Look at this. The Jews, and you know, did you ever notice that? Can I ask you a question? Didn't they, isn't they, aren't they Jews too? The, the, the parents? <clears throat> They're Jews as well, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just saying, if you notice how that's written, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews. <laughs> Check it out there. This is life. This is life too. The Jews. Now you are a Jew. But the Jews, your fellow brothers, your brother, your, you know, the other people around you have agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, what's going to happen to a brother? But they will put out his finger. In other words, you'd be ostracized, right? In the modern day vernacular, that that what it means, right? Come over here, where am I being put out of, of 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 church buildings these days? But they are worried about being isolated, uh, ostracized, uh, not part of the group anymore. You know? Uh, yeah. Back then, that was. You know, the, the synagogue was a major part of their lifestyle. Yeah. You know, that's where, that's what connected them to the law was practicing certain things that was involved with that synagogue. And so to be set apart as children of God, you know, and, and and then being put out of that synagogue, which really connected you to God, in a sense, I, I can understand their 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 fear of those religious leaders from that point. You know, um, but it's just uh, it's just amazing. This whole thing is uh, is amazing to me that. Uh, 